Hey, what's up? It's Jesse with JLS Comics. Thanks for watching the video. Fair warning, this video may contain spoilers about Spider-Man Far From Home and other MCU films, whether they're already out or upcoming. If you want to avoid those spoilers, add this video to your watch later queue. Come back after you see the movie. If not, if you're good, let's jump right into it. So Mephisto is rumored to be a villain that will confront Benedict Cumberbatch's Doctor Strange in MCU Phase 4, but He's not the only villain we've heard about. With Spider-Man Far From Home's opening weekend now in a rearview mirror, have the seeds from Mephisto's entrance into the MCU already been planted? Let's talk about it. While the official MCU Phase 4 slate has yet to be revealed, we do know that director Scott Derrickson is returning for the sequel. We've heard about Baron Mordo making his return, and he probably will. We also know that Strange's propensity is for protecting reality from multiversal, extra-dimensional threats. Yes, even though Mysterio used the multiverse as part of his illusion, his grand lie in Far From Home, the concept of a multiverse was already set up and spoken of, quite literally, in the first Doctor Strange movie. In fact, Dormammu comes from a dark dimension, the place from which the Ancient One derives her powers, and we also know of the Mayor Dimension and a couple of others. Mephisto debuted in 1968 as an antagonist to Silver Surfer. His name's adapted from Faustian lore, that of Mephistopheles, a devilish agent of the devil, and is just that for the MCU as well. While he hasn't been physically revealed in the MCU just yet, he did get a rather brief mention. In one end credit scene for 2012's The Avengers, Nick Fury handed Steve Rogers an eyes-only dossier on the Tesseract. On it, which you can see here, it says how they want to be used and deny certain wishes. Uh, and he's referring to the Cosmic Cubes or the Infinity Gems. Mephisto has proposed that a billion sentient universally linked will could overcome this problem and that the cubes could be as powerful as the Infinity Gems. There's two versions, one from the movie and a redacted version that came out afterwards. But it's been ever since this was first seen back in May of 2012 that Mephisto's first appearance has been speculated on by the comic book community. This establishes firmly that he does exist somewhere within the MCU. Since his debut in the pages of Silver Surfer, he's gone on to test the souls and the spirits of many a hero like Spider-Man and Ghost Rider too. Johnny Blaze sold his soul to Mephisto in order to acquire the spirit of vengeance and become the Ghost Rider. Scarlet Witch used the soul of Mephisto to create her two sons, Speed and Wiccan, whom I've spoken about in previous videos when discussing the potential for their Disney Plus streaming service appearance. In Spider-Man One More Day, a story whose repercussions are still felt in Marvel Comics universe to this day, Mephisto made a deal with Peter Parker to save Aunt May. But it was a quid pro quo deal and for that Mephisto wanted the happiness of Mary Jane and Peter's marriage. To save Aunt May, the marriage would be no more. But you see, during the second issue of Civil War event, the comic book version, not the movie version, Spider-Man was unmasked and his identity had been revealed to the world. It was Tony Stark of all people who convinced him to set an example and reveal himself. Part of Mephisto's deal was that he would erase the knowledge from this event of his secret identity from the entire world. Once again, no one would know who was under the spider mask. And it is this that could solve the current conundrum that Tom Holland's Peter Tingle finds himself in here at the beginning of MCU Phase 4. But the decision to end the marriage was met with a lot of controversy and outrage among fans. People hated the idea that Peter and MJ were no longer married. Luckily, Peter and MJ the MCU are not married, but she does know his identity. She guessed it and it'd be true. They are dating. But where does Peter turn? Now that he's in New York City again and J. Jonah Jameson released this video from Mysterio up on the big screen there, right in the middle of New York City, right in the heart of downtown. Well, where would he go? 1778 Bleecker Street, of course, the address for the Sanctum Sanctorum and of Doctor Strange. That's exactly where he goes in one more day when Aunt May is shot. You see, Kingpin was watching the news from jail, saw the announcement, and put out a hit on his entire family, which resulted in Aunt May being shot. Interestingly, Vincent D'Onofrio, who plays Kingpin on the Marvel Netflix shows, said it would be astonishing to be a part of the MCU. By the time a third Spidey or second Doctor Strange film rolls around on the slate, the two-year buffer stipulation in the Disney Netflix contract will have passed and D'Onofrio would actually be able to show up. So realistically, this sequence of events could happen. In Far From Home, Spider-Man asked Maria Hill why they needed him specifically, and he lists a few Avengers as alternates like Captain Marvel and Doctor Strange, to which she replies, unavailable. Scott Derrickson tweeted out an image of a comic book panel from an early issue of Doctor Strange. He's also tweeted out an image of Doctor Strange and Namor together, and I'm not suggesting Namor necessarily shows up here, although he could, but what it does suggest is Strange is very busy at the Sanctum, holding off a nightmare. A nightmare transferred itself from Doctor Strange's 
mind to that of Peter Parker. It took Doctor Strange entering Peter's mind to defeat Nightmare. Perhaps he's unavailable and far from home because he's battling Nightmare in this trippy mindscape of a battlefield. And I do mention Nightmare because both Scott Derrickson and the screenwriter of the first film both mentioned intent to use Nightmare in Mordo. One quote goes like this, me and Scott, meaning Scott Derrickson, have not laid out the groundwork for it, but what I can say is that I have a feeling that whatever nightmare is involved with Baron Mordo being somebody who considers himself the defender of natural law will have something to do with it. Baron Carlo Mordo, the sorcerer who appeared alongside Doctor Strange in the 2016 movie, had a heel turn at the end of the film. Well, there's a story about how Mordo became ever more powerful, and how did he do this? He sold his soul to Mephisto. Could Mordo be working with Nightmare from the Dark Dimension and Mephisto from his pocket Hell Dimension? I could see it happening where he got his power from Mephisto and is using Nightmare to gain control of the Sanctum or some of the mystic artifacts housed within. And could Spider-Man, his will weakened by Nightmare, give in to Mephisto's proposal to save MJ, Aunt May, erase people's minds? Does Mephisto sense Peter's desperation and reveal himself only to feed on the pain? Could this be the deal that struck that erases humanity's memory of Parker revealed by Mysterio? It could all work. It could be over the course of a couple films, Doctor Strange 2, Spider-Man 3. So yes, it could all work and the pieces have definitely been laid. But how would the fans react? Is it too complicated? Too dark? I know One More Day is extremely divisive, but the MCU doesn't have a Parker marriage with which to contend. I mean, he just now got to kiss the grill he likes on their class trip, so there's that. But I guess if used by Derrickson, which could be a nod to the deal with Nightmare and Mordo still front and center, this could all work. And incidentally, Nightmare and Mephisto Surtur, Dormammu, a couple other demons are all connected via this demonic cabal of evil calling themselves Lords of the Splinter Realms. So I think this could work. It might be a little too complicated or convoluted for the MCU, but over the course of a few movies, this could be spread out and decompressed into an interesting little arc. But I want to know what you think. Is this possible? Who do you think will show up? Let's continue the conversation in the comment section below. And if you enjoy content like this, haven't done so yet, don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe buttons. Join this rapidly growing JLS Comics family. Be a part of all of our conversations, new and old. We'd love to have you. I'm Jesse. This is JLS Comics, and I'll see you soon.